Regret is universal. It is a shared human experience. And acknowledging regret for what it is can allow us to neutralize and normalize the shame that comes with it. Anyone older than six who has not damaged their orbitofrontal cortex experiences regret. It is the essence of being a human and can be a powerful driving force. We might not like the feeling of regret and we may try to ignore it, but instead of making us weaker, it has the potential to make us better and stronger. While reading The Power of Regret, I have noticed important parts that have taught me a lot about regret and I would love to share them with you today. In this video, I'm going to share with you different categories of regrets, difference between action and inaction regret, and the four steps that can help you overcome regret. Part 1. Different Categories of Regret The author Daniel Pink has categorized regrets in four different categories. These categories are foundation regrets, boldness regrets, moral regrets, and connection regrets. Foundation regrets come from our own inadequacy to think ahead and plan accordingly, work hard, and lack of conscientiousness. They sound something like, if only I had done the work, and it reveals the human need for stability. Boldness regrets come from our failure of taking risks and letting opportunities go away. These types of regrets often sound like, if only I had taken that risk, and it reveals the human need for growth. Moral regrets arise when an individual fails to live up to their values, and it often sound like, if only I had done the right thing. It reveals the human need for goodness. Connection regrets come from broken or incomplete relationships. It often sounds something like, if only I had reached out. It reveals the human need for love. Part 2. Action versus Inaction Regrets Before learning how to take advantage of regrets and how to use them to turn us into a better and more satisfied version of ourselves, we first need to distinguish between action and inaction regrets. Action regrets are about the things that we did. They are less prevalent. On the contrary, inaction regrets are about the things that we didn't do. The goal of action regrets is to change our immediate situation. And this can be addressed in two ways. Number one, by undoing what we did. And number two, by responding to these regrets using at least. It can help us feel better about this situation. Undoing regrets can often start by asking ourselves questions like, if I have harmed others or myself, is there a way I can reconcile the situation by an apology or by material or emotional compensation? Unfortunately, in many cases, undoing is not an option at all. For such situations, adlisting helps. Adlisting is done by changing the way we think about the situation and looking for silver lining in an otherwise green situation. Therefore, the next time when you find yourself stuck on an action regret, turn it into something productive by asking questions like, how could the decision I now regret have turned out worse? What is one silver lining in this regret? How would I complete the following sentence? At least dash 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 dash. The goal for both action and inaction regrets is to have a better future the future with less regrets. And this can be attained through next four steps, which involve our emotions, behaviors, and thinking. Part three, solutions to regrets. Number one, self-disclosure. Firstly, we need self-disclosure to relieve from experiences and shame that come from regrets. We tend to believe disclosing our negative emotions, especially to others, brings us shame. But according to vast literature, it has a healing effect. Relieving experiences can turn abstract feelings more concrete, and it can provide us insight into what is important and valuable, which in turn relieves some burden. To improve and move forward in the future, do one of the following tasks. Write about whatever it is that you regret for 15 minutes for three consecutive days. If you can't do that, 
Record your regret on a voice recorder for 15 minutes for three consecutive days. If you can't do that either, tell another person about your regret. This is how you can begin to harness your regrets. Step number two, reckoning process. In regret reckoning process, you show yourself some compassion. Making mistakes is part of our being human, but we tend to be more critical of ourselves as compared to other people. This is counterproductive and it stops positive future growth. To complete the second step, you need to ask yourself these three questions. If someone that you love come to you with a similar regret that you have, how would you treat that person? The second question is, is this type of regret unique to you or other people might have endured as well? The answer to the second question would almost always be that you are not alone. And the third question is, does this regret define you or is this just an unpleasant situation? Step number three, distancing. This step involves distancing yourself and analyzing the situation to come up with an efficient strategy that will help you to move forward. We can distance ourselves in three ways. Number one, through space. Looking at the situation from an outsider's perspective. Number two, through time. Imagining how would you react towards these regret in 10 years. And number three, language. Addressing the regrets in the second person. These can help you gain the benefits of self-distance. Imagine your best friend has the same regret. What would be the lesson for him from that regret? And what would he do next? Or analyze your regret from a neutral perspective, much like a clinician. Make a diagnosis, come up with possible reasons and make a prescription. Now write an email to yourself from a second person perspective describing all your findings either through imagining your best friend or through analyzing your regret from a neutral perspective. Lastly, imagine in a decade you are proud of yourself how you dealt with the regret. Now think what did you do? Step number four, anticipating regrets. Another way of moving towards a better future is by anticipating regrets. The following techniques can be used to anticipate your regret. Start a regret circle, much like a book club. Create a failure resume. Study self-compassion. Compare your New Year's resolution with your past year's regrets. And lastly, mentally subtract all the negative events and adopt a journey mindset. Anticipating regrets has an upside as it helps us make better judgments and decisions, but it also makes us frequently overestimate regrets. That is why the regret optimizing framework tells us that we should only focus on the regrets that fall into the four core categories, which are foundation, boldness, moral and connection regrets, and let go all the other regrets. These four steps provide a systematic way of dealing with your regrets. I agree with the author. Instead of making us weak, regret makes us stronger and wiser if it is done right. It can serve as our engine to success. Something that hurts but also instructs us by providing photographic negative of what makes life worth living. We need to learn how to take regret as a positive force driving us to a better future rather than dwelling on the negatives. If you are struggling with forgiving what you can't forget, watch the book summary here. This will help you a lot. Thank you so much for watching till the end. See you in the next video. Much love and bye.